let's move on to the last topic, which I think is a good one, and this is right in Mark's sweet spot. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and I think that you know the, the management of triple <laughs> negative <laughs> breast cancer <laughs> is uh, is just tough. I think we all would agree that. I think it's the real challenge. I think we've got great drugs that give us decent responses and decent uh, progression-free survivals with the HER2, as well as with the estrogen receptor positive subsets of breast cancer. But we're really left with triple negative, which. I guess we're learning over the last couple of years is really probably a collection of multiple different diseases. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first part of it is that, that, that piece of disease, that piece of the triple negative pie that's BRCA1 uh, mutated. Right. And do you want to talk about that? I mean, I guess the, the first question for you before you even get into brocade and some of these other studies is what would drive you? Someone walks in the door with triple negative breast cancer. What would you, aside, would you, would you just go by the strict genomic criteria to decide whether to test her for BRCA, or would you just test her out of hand? So, yeah, you know, the NCCN criteria are anybody under age 60, right. which is pretty reasonable. And I mean, I think an Ashkenazi woman, you could potentially even go up older than that, although you still have a relatively rare pickup even in that subset. So, I mean, we're extremely um, liberal about testing people at this point, right. I mean, both somatically and so germline. like a 65 year old woman walks in with a triple metastatic triple and I get a breast cancer with that dry and no real family history That's would right. that drive you to test her not necessarily because you know if she's Jewish you can test her but if she's not Jewish and on Medicare you probably won't be able to do it right but even though that may help I mean let's I mean, even help, let's talk about brocade I mean let's talk about some of these trials you know where with well, the platinum is a brocade I mean what do you can you describe brocade to people first yeah so brocade was a randomized phase two trial it was actually a three-arm trial um, in individuals who had German germline deleterious or, or likely deleterious BRCA mutations. And um, they were randomized to either get carbotaxol with viliparib, which is a, um, a modestly potent PARP inhibitor, uh, or placebo. And then the third arm was actually temozolomide plus viliparib, which was an open label combination. Um, the temozolomide viliparib arm had about a 30% clinical benefit rate, so which is more than we've seen with temozolomide alone in the past. And whether that's due to the predicted preclinical interaction or whether that's just single agent PARP inhibitor activity is hard to say. But in the randomized component, which was the, the subject of the report, there was uh, a numerically significant, well, uh, there was a numerical difference, it wasn't statistically significant, in um, progression-free survival, and there was a better response rate in the, the women who got the investigational drug, but it, it didn't translate into anything from the, from the clinical perspective. Surprisingly, there, in other words, there wasn't a significant progression-free survival advantage. From the Surprising standpoint, there wasn't really an increment in toxicity either because combinations with PARP inhibitors have been a little tricky for chemo plus PARP because of myelosuppression. Um, but in this case, there didn't appear to be a substantial difference. So in one sense, it was a little bit disappointing. In another sense, it's not really a test of the potential benefit of PARP inhibitors in that setting, which is as single agent therapy rather than as chemo sensitizers. But so, these patients weren't selected, though, for BRCA. Yeah, right? this study they were. They were. This study they were. They were. I thought yeah, they were not. I no, they were. brocade they were. There's a neoadjuvant trial, which was triple negative disease. You know, there's an ice bike component, which was triple negative disease, where they weren't selected, and you know, they did appear. That was the second study that you Yeah, I'd like to hear about that, because I was fascinated by that, that potentially you have potential, you know, multi-gene panels that could select who you know, would benefit from this therapy or not. Could you describe that? Yeah, so there's been this whole idea that that there's a, so cells that lack functional BRCA have issues with repairing double-strand DNA breaks, and, and you can sort of identify those through a, a particular signature of genomic damage, genomic scars, and, and it's referred to as brackenness. And the hope is that cancers in some patients arising without BRCA mutations will have similar defects that will allow them to be sensitive to either PARP inhibition or platinum-based therapy. And, and there's a reasonable amount of data in ovarian cancer that, that that's the case for a meaningful proportion of patients with ovarian cancer. Whether or not that's the case for breast cancer isn't clear, and so a number of people have been trying to identify biomarkers of um, what they are assuming is this kind of DNA damage repair defect. but is actually a readout for sensitivity to different kinds of therapy. So I, I spy 
this arm of iSpy was combination of Lipper with a, with a standard chemotherapy backbone, and they were searching for predictors. And they had this, you know, PARP7 gene signature, which they thought was, was predictive. Um, that obviously needs to be validated in another setting, and whether that translates into anything meaningful in a clinical setting is not clear. Because other attempts to, to look at this, like Andy Tutt's TNT study, were kind of disappointing. I mean, using commercially available HR assays and other more investigational things like BRCA1 methylation or, or mRNA silencing really weren't able to identify in the somatic setting predictors of sensitivity to platinum therapy, which is very similar to sensitivity to PARP. Yeah, and I just would put in a plug because um, the brocade study is being, there is a phase three study that will look at the addition of that PARP inhibitor, but there's lots of PARP inhibitors out there for BRCA mutation carriers. And what I'm seeing in my referral patterns is people, when they have a triple negative, in particular BRCA, there's a rush to putting them on a platinum chemo and then sending them to a place for a trial. Um, I'm really trying to encourage referring physicians to think twice in the BRCA mutation carriers and try to get them on a study yeah. before they utilize a platinum-based agent because for the most part, I'd say over half of the BRCA mutation randomized studies, you can't have received a platinum. So just to be a little bit more thoughtful. And that's all of these studies actually support the mutational testing, um, I, at least the ones we have open. And so you ask if we would test a 65-year-old with first-line triple negative. I probably would in the context of a screening for a clinical trial. trial. Um, I don't think there's any harm to doing that. But just really being a little cautious about jumping on that platinum bandwagon in these BRCA mutation carriers without at least a clinicaltrials.gov search. But if there isn't a clinical trial, do you believe the TNT data? Would you say that if someone is BRC mutated, you would prefer a platinum if a trial wasn't available? I believe the data, yeah, and at least in my BRCA mutation carries platinums are very active, but they're they're going to be their second line and third line and really trying to get them. I, I think the data is quite supportive of the PARP inhibitors in this very unique population of patients. Do you have anything to add to the MGH version? I, I agree. I think it you do BRCA this. testing on people with triple negative that come in the door? If um, there's, there's a reason to do BRCA testing in terms of either a clinical trial or you're worried that the patient has high risk or triple negative or, and is there um, in the 40s. Mm -hmm. So I think if there's a clinical indication to do BRCA testing or um, indication in terms of a clinical trial, we would consider that. But we don't do it for everyone with triple negative breast cancer. Okay.